Okay, so uh, hi everyone, my name is Cam Turner. I'm the director of the Advanced Cooling Group at Cool IT Systems, and I'm joined by my co-presenter, Elizabeth Langer, the R&D manager at CPC. So we'll go over, for those that are maybe a little newer to OCP, we'll just do a background refresher of what we're working on and go over the updates that we've had since last time we presented on this topic, um, and of course the call to action. I'd like to start out by thanking all the team members that are working diligently on this document. So we've got uh, a representation from coal plate vendors, uh, Manifold and CDU with, with Boyd, Cool IT, Vertiv and Motivair, as well as Quick Disconnects with Stobley and CPC. And of course, yeah, Intel has been heavily involved in, in helping us on the silicon and, and server side. The original revision of this document was uh, created in 2019 and contributed, and it was uh, the very first contribution from the ACS group. This document was intended to cover basically uh, a high level of, of all the different uh, components and things that you need to consider when looking at a cold plate cooling loop. Since then, though, there have been a lot of excellent work by the members and many of them in the audience here that covered deep dives into leak detection, fluid serviceability, integration, and logistics. And what we want to do with this is pull all of that information in with, with links so that there's no repeated information, there's a single source of truth throughout. Uh, we are also expanding to cover more inside the IT equipment as well as the uh, TCS or the Technology Cooling System Fluid Loop. And finally, uh, a key aspect of this is to use the same format that was done with the Immersion Work Group that has the specification requirements, so the, the must-haves, the optional requirements or, or the nice-to-haves, and finally a space for individual customer requirements that would be you know, specific to the, each install. So to tie it all together, another bit of work we're doing is on terminology and ensuring that throughout all of the OCP documents as well as external uh, reference documents like ASHRAE, we're, we're harmonizing on that uh, tech terminology. So we've adopted facility water system, which is FWS, that comes into the CDUs. CDUs can either be in the, in the rack or in the row. And on the secondary side of the CDU, it goes through the technology cooling system up into the IT equipment. So on the right-hand side, you see a, an aerial view of a server that is representative of what an IT equipment cold plate loop would look like with quick disconnects, internal uh, tubing, some manifolding, there's the CPU cold plates and also the, the dim memory cold plates. And then kind of taking a step back and tying all of that terminology into this document, what we're looking at uh, and going to be including is everything that's in blue there. So from the TCS side of the CDU through a rack manifold or any pipe works for a row based manifold through the QDs and into all of the IT equipment uh, that we have shown previously on uh, the last slide there. So as Cam mentioned, the first revision of this document was, was drafted in 2019 and the scope of that document was really about um, establishing definitions for the various cooling technologies um, specific to cold plates, defining the components associated with that ecosystem, so pumps, manifolds, um, certainly CDUs, quick disconnects, cold plates, um, and, and starting the conversation around what are some of those key requirements as we look to de-risk the system um, with regards to you know, leak detection, um, other sensors we might want to incorporate, um, and certainly inter intervention techniques. Then now building on the, the second revision of this document um, that, that Cam and Jordan and the team have, have started here in 2022, we're looking at how do we, how do we qualify um, this design and development process. We're introducing, uh, I guess, a sub-ecosystem of that technology cooling system called the cold plate loop, um, identifying and acknowledging the TCS pipeworks aspect of, of that side of the system, 
starting a conversation around some of the pump two phase systems that, that we're seeing interest in and then trying to draw some dotted lines to other um, industry guidance and uh, regulatory um, information that might be relevant to, to these types of installations. So with limited time, the, the primary update that we wanted to, to touch on today relative to revision two of this document is with regard to that cold plate loop. Um, so thinking back to the graphic Cam just mentioned, that's within the TCS um, loop on the, on the ITE side, specific to the node itself. And so in the previous document, we had isolated just the cold plate. And if you look on the right-hand side, we identified those parameters of importance around uh, flow pressure, temperature, uh, some filtration materials, uh, but now we want to build on that in revision two and start to include some of the ancillary components such as tubing, um, manifolds that might be distributing flow across various components within the chassis, um, and then certainly quick disconnects. With regard to the tubing, um, you know, we might have rigid or, or flexible tubing considerations around straight bore versus corrugated, convoluted that are all going to influence these parameters of importance. Um, and we have a note here indicating too, there'll be an update to the QD or quick disconnect portion of this document, largely due to the fact that in the first revision, the, the QDs were, were really scoped around just at the rack manifold level. So QDs on the rack manifold that would feed the individual nodes themselves. But now realizing that there are quick disconnects in you know, various parts of the TCS um, system that might be within the CDU to enable different you know, hot swapping of components, um, and now within the, um, within the server chassis itself, maybe at the cold plate, cold plate level to, to tubing. And now, you know, two knowing with the advent of more, more two-phase applications, identifying what, which specific parameters of importance here in this table we might wanna uh, consider differently relative to a two-phase system versus, versus a single phase. Um, and the, the one that really jumps out to me is, is at the bottom here, the wetted material list. At the bottom, not meaning it's the least important, um, but I think there's, there's gonna be a lot of different considerations as we migrate from, from water-cooled or water glycol systems into some of these you know, new engineered dielectrics or, or fourth generation refrigerants. Once we've established all the different components within, within that chassis, within that now cold plate loop, um, we wanna be able to understand the, the more holistic performance of the system. Um, and be able to translate to the actual application requir requirements as it relates to temperature and, and flow rate and the specific cooling fluid. So oftentimes components like quick disconnects or, um, or tubing, they might have published uh, data regarding pressure and flow requirements specific, specific to water, but oftentimes we know we're using maybe a water with glycol mixed in, we wanna understand what that concentration is um, and be able to adjust our, um, our parameters based on that. And then I see an asterisk here about you know, adding testing and definitely an advocate for more, more testing if we can get our hands on either a, a prototype of, of that loop or even at the component level to get in the lab and, and do some of that performance testing that, that'll add, um, add confidence and be able to validate our assumptions around the performance. And then thirdly, we mentioned adding, trying to draw, draw some dotted lines and, and knit in some other industry guidance um, and, and certainly local and regional regulations that, that might be of interest to these cold plate applications. Uh, a couple that jump out here are the latest uh, revision of the IEC standard 62368 around IT equipment. And that now has a, a subset specific for liquid cooling components. Uh, in there, you're gonna find some guidance around you know, uh, safety magnitudes for, for things like operating and burst pressures. Um, we're starting to align on, on kind of a three, three X multiplier for that. Um, there'll be some guidance certainly around wetted materials, um, which ties into the, the last bullet there on the flammability rating of, of any of the component materials um, and knowing where they are in the system and, and how that might impact um, the, the safety and reliability if, if we do have the, a catastrophic event. Great, so as you can see, lots of work around kind of how this spec document will, will align and what information's in it. I did want to spend just a few moments talking about how the doc is used. Uh, we do get a fair bit of questions about this, so I'll, I'll try to walk you through it as best I can. So the, the requirements document is your, your baseline for any specification that would be submitted into OCP. 
So if, a, uh, say, an end user wanted to submit a server or an OEM server with uh, cold plates, they would come up with the specification for the cold plate loop. And this is then, has, it has to meet all of the specification requirements called out in the requirements doc. As long as it does that, it's, it would be vetted with the requirements checklist, and I'll show you an example of that on the next slide. And once all of those are met, it can be presented to the cold plate community as a whole. So this is a monthly uh, Teams meeting that everybody has access to. It's on the, on the website. And they, you just present it. This is the specification we're looking to do. Does anybody within the community have anything they'd like to add uh, you know, to improve it? All of that information then, so the spec doc, the requirements checklist, and the feedback from the review is then submitted to the incubation committee. Uh, this is a monthly meeting as well, and you just present what you wanna uh, submit. The incubation committee will approve this, assuming it meets all the requirements, and then uh, you have a finite amount of time, and it kinda depends on where you're at, but as a rule of thumb, 90 days to submit uh, your specification and all the required design files for, for the product, depending on whether you're going for an accepted product or inspired product, there's kind of different levels of, of information that needs to be provided. So I'm sure that's crystal clear, but if you have any, uh, any questions about it, you know, the, the right people to talk to are in the room. So on the, just an example of the checklist on, on the side here, it's, you know, if you take a look at the cold plates, it's, you know, it has the parameters of important sheet been filled out um, and, and what type of cold plate is it? So this, it's not intended to say this is a good product or a bad product. It's just intended to say this meets the requirements that OCP has set forward to be an OCP accepted product. So finally, the call to action, uh, we have bi-weekly meetings. It is posted on the ACS cold plate calendar. Uh, we're, we're always looking for more people. It's, it's a lot of work and we wanna make sure that it's, it's inclusive. So uh, recently we had an individual reach out to talk to us about adding loop heat pipes. So any other technologies that anybody would like to have added into this? please reach out to myself or Jordan uh, and, and we will look at adding that content in with, with the greater group. Uh, any maybe server OEMs, we could use some, some more feedback on that side to make sure that you're getting the information that you need in this requirements document uh, so that you know, all the products conform to what you would like to see. And with that, thank you and we're available for any questions you might have. All right, well, if you think of anything after, come reach out to Elizabeth, myself, or Jordan. Oh, here we go, sorry. Yeah, uh, I was just wondering, so you capture in the specification the pressure and the flow characteristics. What about the thermal performance? Do you have like a heat transfer coefficient as a function of flow, or how do you specify that? So we're, we're working through that. Uh, right now, the thought is to give the uh, expected delta T at the flow rate, at the design flow rate. Uh, so that would give you uh, the ability to calculate whatever you needed on that. Again, something we're working on, usually it's water would be the easiest, but if it is done um, with a, a specific propylene glycol water mix, uh, as long as you have the conversion factors, we, we, that would be fine. Uh, in the current document, I seem to not see the basically guideline for selection of thermal interface material. Is that included, or if we were to include that, what's the process going forward? Do you need to be an OCP like sponsoring member to be able to add? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch. I think the, whole the question thing. was around the inclusion of a wetted materials list. Yeah, thermal within interface the material. Yeah, so that we, we've spoken at length about that, and we, we reference it throughout the document. Wetted yeah. materials list. But, you know, so to develop an explicit, um, you know, 
listing of what is acceptable, I think, is, is in the works, but is certainly you know tricky as we talk about different coolants that are that are being introduced. Yeah, that's that's one hundred percent it. So Sean and his team have done a great job on fluid uh, serviceability, and there's a couple coolants that have gone through the the testing, but it, it always comes down to the materials that touch the fluid have to be compatible with each other and the fluid. So, you know, in general, it's linked up to what ASHRAE is publishing as well, but uh, we'll, we will be pulling all of that together. It's part of the rationale too in, in trying to incorporate more of those other industry guidelines like ASHRAE um, to, to make sure that all of those material lists are aligned and there's not conflicting information. Yeah, I'll reach out to you later for details, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you.